as you may know, we are going to talk about China's overcapacity problem. And China's Commerce um, Minister Wang Wentao, he was, he's in Europe, and he has refuted accusation by the US and then EU about China overinvesting in its uh, EV car, solar panel industry. Uh, but in your opinion, do you feel like the current situation meet the criteria or uh, the definition of overcapacity or excess capacity? Number one, in the December work conference report, China did recognize overcapacity as a challenge. So they seem to be changing their tune a little. And I noticed, you know, also during Secretary Yellen's trip that there was pushback in terms of admitting that there that there is overcapacity and that this is a problem. Um, China seemed to be saying that, you know, this all has to do with market forces and competitiveness. And um, in my view, I can't agree with that assessment. Um, China has a history of directing state funds, state assistance, um, and other types of support for certain domestic industries, which leads to a lot of supply at the same time they're not boosting domestic demand and relying on exports to contribute to their global economic growth. And these exports are the result, in my view, of unfairly traded practice, unfair trade practices, including pricing these goods below cost, dumping, but also selling subsidized goods, which also, um, if done in, in excess, and you know, can also be um, an unfair trading practice as well. So in my view, there clearly is overcapacity in, in a number of sectors in China. Um, we've seen the movie before with respect to steel, aluminum, and um, solar. And I think this time around, not only the US, but the rest of the world is starting to act sooner rather than later to kind of head off any of the any potential import surges. Yeah, as you mentioned about the steel problem, steel dumping, we've seen that for many, many years before. But in your view, why do you think that the US and EU are quicker to respond to this green energy overcapacity problem than they did um, con concerning the steel problem? Because they've learned by experience. And the experience shows that if you wait too long to ask, to, to take action, by the time you take action, your industry, your domestic industry is already in a very difficult position and it's hard for them to regain market share. So I even saw today that the EU now is announcing another um, subsidies investigation into wind turbines. And so we're seeing a number of um, subsidies and dumping investigations, not only by the EU, but also by um, other countries, including South Africa, Brazil, and we've seen Mexico raise their tariffs against many Chinese imports over the past year as well. So again, it's not just a US problem, it's a global problem. And it really threat. it really just, the, China is so big, you know, the, the statistic I like to use, China accounts for 30% of global manufacturing, but only 13% of global consumption. So things are out of whack. They can't consume what they're making at home and what they're making at home, they're doing that deliberately. Market forces aren't correcting the overcapacity in China. Um, Money is is directed towards certain sectors, and many many companies in China, you know, step up to the plate, take the money, and try and build companies um, in the sectors that have been designated by Beijing for, um, you know, for for um, for technology dominance. Yeah, uh, we talk about subsidy, I think one of the main complaints the West has uh, um, towards China is its government subsidy. But there's uh, an argument could also be made that in the States, the Biden administration, they also do offer subsidy in the form of tax credit to consumers of EV cards made in North America. And then they that also upset the Europe as well. So um, how, how do we count, you know, in your view, are, are the two the same? No, they're not the same. When you look at the scale of financial assistance, either to consumers or to producers in electric vehicles in the United States through the CHIPS Act, et cetera, 
what we are providing is so minuscule compared to the years and billions of dollars of subsidies that China has been giving. And again, it's so complicated and complex because it's not just grants to these companies. It's it's a combination of, of subsidies, of low cost loans, of access to um, you know, energy and land at very reduced prices. Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, many Chinese companies, they don't worry about going bankrupt because they know at the end of the day, they'll be bailed out. So they're operating under very different um, principles and uh, very different operating principles than, than U.S. or other foreign companies. So I don't think you can compare the level. And the other thing I would just say is that, you know, the U.S., um, you know, basically had a choice. Do we try and just continue doing what we're doing and watch China take over more and more of our market? Or do we need to get into the game that China's already playing, but do it in a more effective and targeted way? And that's, I think, the Biden administration recognizing we need to build competitiveness at home um, has been able to enact very important legislation, which provides um, some financial assistance for some key sectors in the United States, including semiconductors and clean energy sector, the clean energy industries. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of um, EV cars exports coming from China and mostly to EU, but some to the US as well. Uh, there's an argument that why can we just not let the market decide which product they want to buy and then um, and instead we uh, the, the governments, the Western country government, they have to step in and intervene in your view. Well, in my view, because again, you're talking about fair trade and unfair trade. And how are US companies, which are private, expected to compete against Chinese electric vehicle companies that have received over the years and for many, many years, billions of dollars of assistance. So it's an unlevel playing field. The WTO recognizes that by um, sanctioning rules against dumping and against ex ex subsidization. Um, and so what we're trying to do, or what the EU is through dumping and subsidy rules is to try and level the playing field in a WTO legitimate um, way. So uh, in the beginning, we talk about China sort of being changing its tune and sort of is in denial of this overcapacity problem. So do you feel like a Yellen's trip to China this time, um, how effective could it be? And uh, some experts that have interviewed, they have seem to have this view that China is engaging the US for the sake of um, engagement so that they could delay actually solving the problem so that they can create this appearance of reduced tension. And the experts also feel like maybe the U.S. is doing similar things in the sense that we engage so that we can fly to China, present our stance so that we can tell the people that we have tried, but China does not listen. So now we can justify our uh, punitive measures. So do you agree with this mm -hmm. view? Yeah, they're a lot more complicated than that. I think both sides are engaging, trying to engage in good faith. I think because both sides recognize that for the couple of years where there's very limited engagement, that was not in, in our mutual interest. That said, I think both sides have very modest expectations for this engagement. But one of the important points of engaging is to be able to raise concerns with the other side before actions are taken. And in many ways, I think Secretary Yellen was the right person to develop to deliver this message to China. Um, and I think um, you know, both publicly and privately, she had conversations about our concerns and not again, not just US concerns, but global concerns with Chinese um Chinese um overcapacity efforts. Um and now she'll, you know, on a return home to Washington, um, there will be discussions about how how and when the United States should respond. So um, she also established intensive a new intensive dialogue on um, on what 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 are they called economic imbalances 
um, recognizing that there, this is a longstanding structural issue in China, once again, where the demand and supply conditions are just out of whack and it, it's no longer acceptable for a country which which comprises 30% of the global of global manufacturing output to have such low levels of consumption, 13% of global economic consumption. Um, the US is going to need to be very vigilant um, and make sure that in any new discussions on these issues, that this does not serve as a delaying tactic by China to take actions now to deal with the problem, nor should it serve as, an, as, as a reason for the United States not to take actions that are needed to deal with an immediate problem. Um, so again, I think having these exchanges, it's very important, but both sides need to be very clear-eyed about what can be achieved in what type of time frame and also to recognize that while talking is great, it, it cannot be an excuse for inaction. So based on your observation, you also just mentioned this um, overcapacity problem has been a long-term and structural systematic problem in China to use overinvestment to boost economic growth. So do you see any willingness to change course or and then to what extent do you think is likely? By China? Yeah, by China. Yeah. So again, I mean, when when the overcapacity issue was flagged in the December work conference report, I think that was a signal that at least some people in China recognize that this is a problem and 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 a problem and and an issue that they they need to deal with. It is a challenge to their economy and it's also a challenge to the global economy. Um in 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 all of in all of this these exchanges, there's always public messages and private discussions. So while publicly this these this past week, China, both in Europe and during the Sec Secretary Yellen's visit, seemed to be more on the defensive and just denying that there's a problem. Um, it could be that in private conversations, there was a more there was a franker discussion. Um, where both sides were not playing to a public audience. I don't know that, but um, based on my experience, I think you always need to kind of separate the public and private messages um, that are delivered during any of these trips. Yeah, you mentioned about um, uh, the, the China's domestic demand is only 13% of, uh, of its production. But in your view- Not of its it production, of global consumption. So in your view, why is it so difficult for China to boost up its domestic demand so that it has to use resort to export to deal, deal with the problem? Right. So, you know, China typically, um, if you look at the policy measures it, it has followed, it's much more comfortable giving subsidies and um, pursuing policies that help companies, help manufacturers who then can hire more people. Um, and then hopefully, I think through that, they're thinking that would boost consumer demand. But that's not working. And in the United States and other countries, we take measures to boost consumer um, demand. We saw that during COVID when we gave um, um, you know, tax breaks and direct money to certain consumers just to, to make sure that our economy was functioning well during COVID. Um, and we're not, you know, we, we, we give tax breaks to consumers, um, you know, purchasing credits like in EVs, et cetera. But I think for China, there is this reluctance to give money directly to consumers in fear that that may somehow endanger party control or somehow kind of promote a society that's more materialistic and less interested in doing what's right for the country. So I think part of it is kind of a mindset that needs to be changed, particularly as China becomes a larger and larger economy. So following Secretary Yellen's return from China, and then before she went there, there is some speculation that we could be seeing additional tariffs on certain um, US China exports. And there's also this speculation that maybe US and EU could be waging 
a new trade war in a sense uh, against China over this green energy overcapacity. Um, do you agree? And what's your view on this? No, I, I wouldn't view this as like a trade war. I think this is the U.S. and the EU responding to unfair trade practices by China, which is resulting in a lot of exports in very important products from China, which are distorting and have the potential to distort global markets. And um, I don't think either side, if, if the U.S. raises their tariffs through, let's say, Section 301, or the EU raises its tariffs through subsidies investigations, um, these both deal with unfair trade. So you need to, we need to make that distinction. Um, again, it's only natural that countries take actions against products that are unfairly traded. So for now, I think that the EU is more likely to use tariffs measures, but um, some experts seem to feel like the Biden administration is not a big fan of using tariffs. They maintain that the tariffs measure uh, by Trump, but they have not really put on any additional tariffs. So do you think it's more likely for them to use tariffs measure against this problem or just export control? Oh, well, I don't like export controls would don't really solve this problem, right? One is in, is export controls are to restrict technology going to China. Mm -hmm. What what overcapacity is dealing with imports of unfairly traded goods? Um, so export controls, I don't see that as a, as a tool to really get at this problem, except in a very peripheral way. Um, the U.S. Um, under um, under Section 301 is now has been in, in, engaged in a four year review of the tariffs that have been put in place against China. Um, there has been talk over the past year that the U.S. might look to rebalance tariffs, meaning raise tariffs on certain products like electric vehicles, but lower tariffs on certain consumer items and then keep the balance kind of all in check then. Um, so that's a possibility. But frankly, you know, given um, given concerns about Chinese um ex you know surging exports or potential the potential for chinese surging exports in products of key strategic interest to the us including electric vehicles and batteries i do not rule out that the biden administration um, may indeed just raise tariffs on these products um that's how serious i think this you know current situation is and that's why i think by having secretary yellen um, go to China, deliver this message, both publicly, but then privately, maybe in more detail, um, was a very wise move. So China cannot say we surprised them or we didn't give them the opportunity to take some immediate policy measures to deal with with a, with a, with a, 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 a you know a, a serious trade dispute. 